Good morning, and welcome, or wow, morning, holy fuck, it is 5 o'clock on a Friday, um, not the morning, as it's usually referred to, it is evening, um, let's talk about, um, what we're looking for here, um, the Goldbergs, because it's been kind of a lightning rod of an issue in the last week or so, um, for the last few days, really, because the episode in question aired recently. Now, to bring people up to speed who may not be familiar with the situation as it stands, Jeff Garland um, was involved in some bad behavior on set, um, which is, you know, not good um, if you're a studio. You don't want your actors making the crew uncomfortable, because then unions get involved, and grievances get filed, and lawsuits happen, and it gets bad. So, you know... ABC steps in, and what happened, um, there appears to be two sides of the story now. Regardless, this season of the Goldbergs opened with the death of Pops, because the actor who played him died in real life, and they they killed off the character on the show. So that's how they opened the season. And the season's going to end with Erica, the oldest daughter, marrying Jeff. And you can tell that I do somewhat follow this show. Um, so, yeah, so that's what's going on over the course of this, you know, this thing. Uh, about midway through the season, the incident with Jeff Garland happens, or the outcome of the situation with Jeff Garland happens, and he ends up getting, um, what was referred to as fired at the time, but what is now appearing to not be fired, according to, uh, one of the other actors, Wendy McCormick, uh, Wendy Mc, some McLendon Covey, I think her name is, who plays the mom, Beverly. Um, but, you know, now they're stuck in the situation at the time that, that happens where they're stuck where they're already building toward this wedding happening this season. They are not yet renewed for another season, season nine. They're, they're on season eight now. They have not yet been renewed for season nine at the time that, that this all happens, and no one's under contract for the new season. So they are building toward this wedding, ending off this season of the show. And then reworking from there and seeing if they can come back for a season nine after that. Because, again, that's the other thing that's happening here. It's like, you know, Adam is, you know, getting ready to go to college and he's having problems with his girlfriend. And, and, okay, I do follow the show. Um, So, yeah, so all of this is happening. And all of this is kind of, you know, going on. Then Jeff Garland is no longer on the show. So they're stuck with a situation where it's like, okay, well, here is the wedding that they've been building towards. And this guy is right up my ass. Um, Here's the wedding that they've been building towards, and they can't exactly go like, you know, no, we're not going to do the wedding anymore to kill off the father instead, because then you're kind of just letting him win. You're taking the situ- making the situation about him, more about him, and in that way making it, you know, worse. So, yeah, so I think that they, they they kind of handled it the right way initially, and then came, like, what they did in, in, in the meantime, since he wasn't there. Um, they used body doubles and stand-ins, because um, they, they, they couldn't, they didn't kill him off, but he wasn't in scenes, so it was body doubles and stand-ins, and, and things like that, so you didn't really see his face, and he was there, but not there. Um, the character's presence was felt, but at the same time, he wasn't, you know, he, he was, like, his presence was there, but you didn't hear him talk and, 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 or anything like that. So, you know, that's all happening. Then came, you know, the, the point where you really can't ignore him any longer. Like, they put it off for as long as possible where you weren't dealing with him, but you really couldn't go further once you hit the wedding. Because the wedding, you can't have the dad who's still alive and not estranged from the family not be at the daughter's wedding so you kind of hit a wall at that point where it's like we have to acknowledge the elephant in the room we can't avoid it any longer that's basically what ends up happening so what they do to kind of get around this is the they use CGI now 
keeping in mind that the Goldberg is not an effects heavy show. The Goldbergs, this motherfucker stopped on the fucking railroad tracks. Um, the Goldbergs is a family sitcom on ABC. And as such, does not have a robust effects budget. Because they don't need a robust effects budget. That's not what the show is. It's not like The Flash or Superman and Lois or Batwoman or any number of other shows that are very heavy on the visual effects. It is a family sitcom set in the 1980s. So they don't have a robust effects budget. Then they have to CG the dad in and the CG looks awful. And people started calling it out where it's like, look, you're going to fire him. You can't just do this. And, you know... Had they fired him, that would have been okay. Like, that criticism would have been valid because it... Well, no, because it's still you're creating an unsafe work environment because you're, you're creating a, a hostile environment by, by having him there and doing what he was doing, which was, you know, making people uncomfortable. And I know that it's, it's a political hot button to be like, well, he's just being a comedian. It's like... He, uh, according to what I read, he, like, went up to a crew member, grabbed her by the face, and yelled, vagina, 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 over and over again, which isn't comedy. It's, she reported him, and he retaliated. It's, it's just retaliation, which is a fireable offense, no matter what your job is, comedian or not. So, that all happens, and it's reported that he is fired, and, you know, ABC does one of those artful, he is no longer with us. And doesn't come out and say it. And I'm reminded of a similar issue recently where something like this happened. Where Ruby Rose of Batwoman departs the show without, you know, any reason why. Um, I guess, you know, they leave on amicable terms publicly. And then, like, a year later, she starts, you know, drumming up headlines, being like, no, they were, like, it was awful working conditions, it was awful, you know, you know, everything was bad on the set, like, I, le- like, I left the show because it was a hostile work environment, and the showrunner was terrible, and this one was terrible, and this one was terrible, and then CW and, and Warner Brothers TV, and again, keep in mind, this is after, you know, the, the incident with, um, what's it called, with, um, the, the issues that came about as a result of the Snyder Cut and with Joss Whedon, like, it comes out and, and Warner Brothers TV circles the wagons around, you know, around their cast and around their crew, and they're like, no, this is untrue. Then, you know, Cameris Johnson, who plays Luke Fox on the show, who didn't benefit at all from her firing, um, comes out and goes, no, she got fired, and she was the series lead and titular character on the show, and she got fired, that will tell you everything you need to know about what happened. And, you know, that was it, and then, like, some PAs came out and were like, no, she's, you know, she was awful on set to everyone, um, and then, you know, all of that kind of happens, and it's just, you know, a situation like that, where it's like, now you get the bad press generated. So here's the situation that the Goldbergs find themselves in. It... The appearance is they fired him, then didn't want to, you know, change the direction of the ship um, to spite him, and then you end up with a subpar product, which is one of those things where it's like the people who are like, oh, go woke, go broke, or get woke, go broke, whatever the fuck the dumbass, rhymey thing that those motherfuckers say is, but regardless, that's what they kind of, that's what they're latching onto and saying like, look, you guys fired him for doing something that we perceive as cancel culture. And as a result, you guys fucked yourselves by not, you know, accommodating it properly. And look what happened, and now it just looks stupid. Um, but then the other side of the story comes out. And what ended up happening was, uh, someone made the comment on Twitter about how, you know, the, the show looks awful, with the, the visual effects look bad, and it's like, this is going to be a just cast the show the character off, which is a valid point. And then Wendy McGlendon Covey comes out and is like, look... We're doing the best we can. We were put in a terrible situation because he left mid-season, which is very different from he was fired. There's a big difference between someone leaving a show and someone being fired from a show. Because if someone is fired from a show, then the, the perception is that it was entirely within the ability of the production company to keep them from leaving. 
And one could say that what happened here, which, I mean, again, me speculating, I don't have an in at Disney. They won't even let me have fucking press screeners. Um, and, and, you know, so looking at this from the outside as a, you know, as an outsider and looking at it and, and, and saying, I don't think that necessarily the, he, he walked off without cause, but at the same time, if you're hired to do a job, you do the job that you were hired to do. And finding out that, like, the way I read the situation, and again, no insiders, is the show was not renewed for season nine. Season eight was the end of its multi-year renewal. Um, and then season nine, if it was going to go on past season eight, it would have needed another expensive contract with cast and crew. Uh, this is all public record based on what's already been announced. It's, this was the end of the multi-year renewal. Like how The Simpsons will go through. It's like, oh, we renewed it for three years. I renewed it for five years. It's the same thing here. They renewed it for three years um, at the end of season four. So five, six, no, at the end of season five. So six, seven, eight would have been till the end of the, would have been the end of the contract, and then they could renew for if they wanted one final season, or otherwise they can just go on elsewhere and just not continue the show, and, and everyone can go about and, and do different do whatever they want. So. That's how it reads to me, is that that's where they were. They're at that point. And now this whole thing comes out. And what it appears, more than anything, was that it wasn't a Roseanne situation where she had to be fired immediately because what she did was deplorable. But Jeff Garland, you know, could not continue to be on set. So I think, again, no inside information. This is just me looking at the situation and speculating. It appears that I would assume that if they were negotiating new contracts for next season, um, they would not renegotiate a new contract with Jeff Garland. Um, and then he finds out about this and leaves and walks off the show. And he walked off during filming, according to Wendy McClendon Covey, and that was the end of it. It wasn't he was fired, it was he quit. And that's a very different thing. Someone throwing a temper tantrum and quitting is not the same thing as, you know, as them being fired. It, the investigation is the investigation and, and the findings of the investigation are the findings of the investigation. But the fact of the matter is, he quit the show. And for them to be like, well, at this point, we've already started shooting the back half of the season. We've already started... Um, and, and, you know, basically every plot this entire season has been about the union of the two families and about the, the, the issues that come about when these two families get married and you have the huge personality of, of Beverly dealing with, you know, everyone else around them. And that kind of thing, you know, it, it's, a, it's a, a kind of a sticky situation that they found themselves in where... They couldn't just abandon the show altogether and, and go, okay, we're going to pivot 100%. Um, because there is no good way to handle the situation based on when he left. You can't just be like, okay, so we're going to continue to do what we were doing and build toward the wedding. And then instead of having the wedding kill the dad off. Um, because that would be very tonally jarring for a season finale based on where the season was going up until that point. You can't do a situation where we're going to build towards, you know, we're going to just ditch the wedding prep altogether because, like, a season and a half, at least, has been devoted to the wedding prep. You can't just be like, okay, we're going to pretend that didn't happen, do a few episodes, then kill the dad off, and then you can't do, okay, so we're going to scrap all, the, all, all that we have written and start fresh and just kill the dad off here and then move on from there and then go to a wedding at the end of the season. There was no good outcome in the situation leading out through the rest of the year. And it's not like they have to do effects on a regular basis or, and they have the budget for effects. And I wonder how much things changed between, season, between when the season was written and how the wedding was supposed to go 
and, and going to where it ended up because of how much money would have had to go to do a pretty unconvincing deep fake of Jeff Garland into the scene. Um, it, it's uncomfortable, um, to say the least. And the thing is, too, like, if they were going to... And that's the thing, too. I think if they fired him, what they would have done is they probably would have, you know, done some small scenes of him at the wedding and then fired him. I think that's the thing. Also, keep in mind the timeline of the firing, if I'm remembering correctly. Jeff Garland, like, the, 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 or not firing, I keep calling that firing, but he wasn't fired. It's like, if you look at, like, how the whole thing went down, he was, let, he left the show after the investigation report came out and was made public. It wasn't like there was a big public outcry to fire him or anything, and they were responding to public outcry. It was, you know, the report came out, and it's like, all right, there's the report. And if he walks off after the report, that's on him, not on the show. So, yeah, I mean, I, the, the, the situation is not great. They were not put in a great situation this season. Um, and I think that, you know... In a world where transparency is important, you can't sit there and say, like, oh, well, they should have kept it to themselves. But no, you need transparency. We need transparency. And look, for the sake of everyone on that set, based on what he was accused of doing, it wasn't anything... Like, he wasn't Harvey Weinsteining his way around around set, but still sexual harassment and sexual harassment. And if he's doing that on set, he shouldn't be there. So, to, to I, I think that's the big issue that I have with this whole situation is blaming him like blaming the production for this oh my god it's a tiny ass puppy um blaming the production for what happened here is not a fair situation to to, to say that it's the production's fault that this happened is not fair given what we know in reality and not in these little fantasy worlds that exist to to make um what's it called to 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 generate like you know anger and vitriol we know what we know and 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 what is publicly available based on what's publicly available public statements that have been made this is the way it looks and if you omit some parts of it it can look worse for one side or the other but if we take everything in the totality of what happened, and even Jeff Garland's statements himself, it was like, I'm no longer with the show. And he had a kind of boastful thing about him, like, oh, how are they going to do the show without me? Which indicates the vindictive streaks that he had about it. Where it's like, he did that because he was mad. That's what the outcome was. And then, you know, he made it seem like it was their fault and they fired him, which is just intentionally inaccurate. So, yeah. So we'll wrap up there for today, on this Friday. Um, if you wanted to listen to yesterday's episode about the, uh, the, the comment regarding lack of faith that I've been seeing pushed around uh, about Miss Marvel, then you can check out. I put it up on Beware of Spoilers on Accident. Um, and if anything else happens, we'll talk about it here as usual. So until then, have a great rest of your week.